Hello, and welcome to this Cybar Spotlight session, Transforming a Regional Payment Landscape. I'm Joy McKnight, editor of The Banker, and I'm joined by Mehdi Mana, CEO of Buna, the multi-currency payment platform launched by the Arab Monetary Fund just over a year ago for the Arab region and beyond. Thanks so much for joining me, Mehdi. Thank you very much, Joy. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So Buna aims to revolutionize how financial institutions can send and receive cross-border payments in Arab currencies as well as key international currencies by improving efficiency, cost effectiveness, uh, risk control, and then also transparency in these payments. But let's take a step back. You know, what do you think are the main challenges to payments in the Middle East um, region, but also maybe globally? Yeah, thank you for the, for the question. I, I, actually, I don't think that there are that much differences between uh, the Middle East region and other regions, or even if we extrapolate at the global dimension. Uh, the, the, the first uh, maybe challenge is the fact that there is no real regional dimension, uh, except maybe the European situation where there, there is a, a, a kind of homogeneous environment with uh, uh, more or less similar solutions and uh, level of solution existing in all countries. Uh, what we see generally are very important differences from one country to another within the same region. Uh, so we'll see some of them with uh, uh, pretty much advanced uh, achievement in terms of payment solutions with uh, quite modern solutions, uh, very well thought regulatory framework, uh, very efficient market infrastructure and other countries which are still in the middle or maybe even at the beginning of that journey. Uh, this is one uh, important challenge. So this diversity in itself is, is a challenge for the payment at regional level. Uh, the second uh, uh, challenge, which is common to all, I think, including to Europe, uh, is the lack of efficient cross-border payment solution. Uh, so this is broadly recognized that in all cases, we have uh, uh, cross-border payment solutions that are less efficient, uh, uh, more costly, uh, less uh, accessible uh, than the solution that could exist at, at national level. Uh, and finally, but this is maybe the most important uh, challenge, uh, is that even when we, uh, in countries where we see uh, advanced solutions, very often uh, th they are a step behind the purpose of the payment very often. Uh, uh, so if we take an example that is not pure theory from, from the region, uh, but we cannot exclude that uh, even physical goods from one country to another move at a quicker speed than the underlying digital payment, which is a, a situation that is difficult to, to, to understand what is the rationale behind it. How can physical goods be more efficient and quicker than digital payment? But it is the case. And this is why uh, there is a specific effort uh, uh, and a joint effort from different actors to, uh, to tackle these particular challenges for cross-border payment that exist in all regions and also at global level. And this is what is, as you uh, rightly said, the, the, the main purpose and objective of BUNA. Okay, and maybe we can talk about the particular situation of the past year under the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, how has that impacted the payment space? Uh, here again, what we have seen is something that is pretty similar uh, around the globe. Uh, so uh, we, we have seen uh, a move to uh, uh, e-commerce, obviously, with the different like, lockdown and restrictions. Uh, uh, the people were uh, uh, buying goods and uh, uh, what they needed for their daily life through e-commerce rather than uh, going through, uh, through shops. Uh, 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 and that, uh, of course, uh, has been supported by the increase of digital payment. And uh, when it comes to uh, uh, point of sales, uh, whenever it was possible, we have seen also a, a, a fast development of contactless payment solutions. Uh, so all these changes or all these evolution uh, were things to be expected with or without the pandemic. Uh, the effect of the pandemic was maybe to accelerate these changes. Uh, and we can, to some extent, say that five to 10 years of, of changes have been compressed in one single year. So it's, uh, especially when we consider that these changes are about, uh, uh, have been achieved in areas which where changes are 
generally difficult to achieve, like uh, uh, consumers' behavior, like uh, uh, business models, like operating models, uh, uh, they take generally uh, uh, years to, to be changed, to be adapted. Here, there was uh, a need for a fast change. And fortunately, uh, uh, which is a good news, the payment industry has been able to adapt and to provide right with good responses for that. So unfortunately, uh, this, this, this was uh, important in, in supporting the, 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 the facing uh, the, the, the crisis, the pandemic uh, crisis that we're uh, collectively uh, facing this year. Okay, um, and in October, um, the G20 and Financial Stability Board released a report uh, on um, a cross-border payments roadmap. Obviously, you know, the challenges that you identified earlier, um, it's been at the front of mind for the G20 and the Financial Stability Board. Um, you know, what were the main objectives of the roadmap? And then again, how does BUNA align with these priorities? Yes, right, indeed. So the, the, the objective were to, to tackle the challenges or the inefficiencies of, of cross-border payment, uh, which they have been uh, uh, st structured in their analysis uh, uh, along four issues, I would say, which are the, uh, the, the high cost, uh, the, the, the low speed, the limited access, and the lack of transparency. Uh, and the way they uh, drafted their roadmap, uh, and by the way, it's, uh, I, I really congratulate the group for the, the wonderful world, the work that has been achieved because it's really a uh, very good analysis. Uh, they, they, they organized uh, around five focus area uh, and 19 building blocks. We have done the exercise jointly with them. Uh, so we have gone through these 19 building blocks one by one. Uh, and we have been very proud to realize that Puna is ticking all the boxes. Uh, so it's, it's uh, to some extent, is not a surprise because uh, what it reveals that is that the uh, problems of uh, cross-border payment uh, are not new. Uh, so they are known by, by, by all and uh, they have taken certain time, they are there for, for some time. So uh, uh, we have, I think, collectively good analysis of, uh, of what are the issues and what could be the, the appropriate responses to that. Uh, Buna, I think, is ticking all the boxes because it has the specificity of being uh, thought from the beginning as a cross-border payment system. Uh, and in our uh, uh, design, in our uh, uh, conception of, of this solution, uh, our primary focus was indeed on tackling each and every of these efficient inefficiency that exists today in, in the area of cross-border payment, in, again, in Mateva region. Okay. Can you give us some examples, uh, like just a couple of the 19 um, boxes that's been ticked? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, one of the focus areas, for example, about uh, the, the, let's start with the first one. It's about the uh, collaboration between uh, private and public sector. Uh, uh, Buna is at the heart of that. Uh, so Buna is a, a central bank initiative. Uh, initially, so it has uh, uh, been launched by uh, the Council of Arab Central Bank and Monetary Authorities Governors, uh, and they mandated the Arab Monetary Fund, which is also uh, uh, an, an international organization but uh, publicly found, uh, with the execution of that project. Uh, now that the project is being delivered, what are we doing? We are handing it over to our users. Uh, so a, a, an initiative like Buna cannot be delivered without this strong commitment and strong collaboration between public and private uh, sector. Uh, this is one clear example of, of it. If uh, uh, I give a more tangible uh, 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 or more uh, technical example of, of this is the adoption of standards. So here as well, so one of the uh, uh, key uh, building blocks of, uh, uh, of the G20 agenda is the adoption of standard, in particular, uh, the ISO standard for messaging 15022 or 2022. Uh, Buna is offering both uh, uh, and offering also the possibility of translating from the one to another, which is in detail what is in the report of, of, of the G20 and the, and the FSP. Uh, the, 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 the openness as well. So uh, the, the, the G20 report, the FSB report is uh, stressing the need of being open. 
to existing platforms, uh, to uh, multiplicities of currencies, to uh, a multiplicity of payment instrument, not just thinking about uh, a, a limited scope, but also uh, having this cross-border dimension. It's, uh, we don't have to stop at the level of region. We have to have uh, this global dimension, the ability to integrate with other payment solution, the ability to uh, uh, interoperate with other market infrastructure. This is also something that is very strong in the BUNA program. Excellent. And so I wanted to go back to the launch. Um, so BUNA launched its technical platform in February 2020. So just before the pandemic really started to take hold across the world. Um, you know, how has the COVID-19 impacted the rollout plans? Yeah, indeed, we had a, a, a launch plan that uh, we aimed at making as flexible as, as possible. Uh, and this is why we did not have uh, a structure of launch which was based on uh, migration by market, by currency, by, uh, by country. Uh, we did not have any uh, strict uh, windows to, uh, to onboard participants. Uh, we wanted it to be totally flexible. Uh, and our strategy was based on three steps. Uh, first, uh, the launch of the platform, the technical platform, in order to enable the onboarding of currencies and of participants. Uh, that step has been achieved in February, as you rightly said, right before the pandemic. Uh, and our aim was to move to step two, uh, onboarding of currencies very quickly, uh, and uh, thereafter to the onboarding of uh, the participant as our third step uh, in order to reach the full operation. Uh, unfortunately, it has been a bit less quick than we were expecting it. Um, uh, the, if I analyze with more details the, the impact of the analysis, I have to take it from two, two perspectives. Uh, on our side, uh, the Arab Monetary Fund and the BUNA team, uh, the, the, the impact was to uh, increase our commitment and our motivation and our dedication to this, to this project. Uh, because if a, a, a solution like BUNA was needed before the pandemic, it's even more needed and even more justified after the pandemic now. Uh, uh, efficient market infrastructure has always been key in uh, overcoming uh, uh, difficulties uh, in the financial sectors. They have been always very instrumental uh, in uh, supporting economic recoveries whenever there were uh, economic crises. Uh, uh, and this is why, again, on our side, when, as soon as we face the pandemic, said, okay, now we have to double our effort. We have to be quicker in delivering. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the stakeholders around us had a moment of doubt, and this is fully understandable. Uh, everything was at stake. Uh, a lot of priorities were changing. Uh, and around March, April, we were receiving the question, are you planning to go ahead? Are you planning to continue? As I said, on our side, we did not have any doubt. So uh, our uh, uh, answer was clear and convincing. Yes, of course, we will continue, we'll deliver this. Uh, and we have uh, uh, spent a certain effort in demonstrating that because we have used uh, uh, the, the challenges that have been, in, been initiated uh, by, uh, uh, by the, the pandemic situation, in particular when it comes to communication and digital communication, uh, we have initiated a, a series of workshops with our stakeholders on a very frequent basis uh, to uh, do the effort that is necessary for such a platform first to, uh, to, uh, to explain to explain because it's not a, a minor change, it's an important change. So we have to explain, to educate, to prepare our stakeholders and also to, to show that we are delivering. Uh, this is key to reassure uh, the, 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 uh, the actors, the stakeholders that uh, an investment on our side will be uh, worth it because it's, a, it's about a, a, an important change and a change that is under control and being uh, delivered as, as planned and as committed. Excellent. Um, and obviously you talked a little bit about how BUNA aligns with the G20 and the FSB objectives in terms of their uh, cross-border payments roadmap. Um, but how, how would you say that BUNA differentiates itself from other payment systems across the globe? You know, most of the payment system are uh, national. Uh, 
so there are very little number of uh, cross-border payment system. Uh, uh, so it's it's an exception in, in itself uh, uh, when it comes to Buna. Uh, it, it's maybe even more an exception because Buna it's exclusively about cross-border payments. So we don't have any national dimension. We are there just to facilitate uh, cross-border cross -border payment. Uh, there are a few examples around the group. Uh, maybe the most relevant one is uh, the one of CLS. Uh, which is uh, here similarly focusing only on cross-border, uh, but it's on a, a specific aspect of cross-border, which is the payment versus payment uh, uh, between uh, key currencies. Um, uh, compared to CNS, uh, Buna is not based or limited uh, to the payment versus payment. So we uh, are, as I mentioned earlier, uh, open in terms of uh, payment instrument. Uh, in our first phase, we are focusing on uh, interbank payment, uh, commercial activities, and uh, remittances. Uh, but in a, in a few months, we'll be launching, uh, launching our instant payment solution. Uh, uh, and uh, in our roadmap, uh, in the near future, we'll be extending to uh, uh, trade financing, uh, little by little, to solutions uh, at point of sale and uh, ATMs. Uh, uh, so it's it's a very large ambitions and very open programs in terms of uh, again geography uh, currencies and also in terms of of payment instrument and if you combine all uh, these dimensions of uh, again not trying to be uh, as as uh, uh, restricted as possible or in order to keep things and, uh, under control but uh, on the contrary with, with having this philosophy of saying why should we restrict to a specific payment instrument why should we restrict to a specific currency uh, uh, it, it, it makes buna unique from from that angle uh, uh, i think this is what could uh, summarize our specificity okay um and you talked a, a little bit already about the engagement with the community. Um, you know, what added value does Buna bring to the banking sector across the Arab world and beyond? Yeah, the, the, the added value to, uh, to, uh, to the, the banking sector uh, may be the easiest way of, of uh, uh, making it tangible is uh, by comparing uh, a payment solution that could exist at national level and the one that exists uh, at cross-border level. Uh, the aim of Buna at a very high level is to make cross-border payment as efficient as domestic payment, as domestic payment. Uh, so of course, the banks can see huge benefits out of that. Uh, but we have also to recognize that some of the business models uh, have been developed on the basis of the existing fragmentation. Uh, so there is a need to adapt. So it's not always uh, straightforward uh, uh, the, 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 to get the new positioning that a bank need to get to, to, to benefit from such an instrumental change. Uh, there is a need to adapt. There is a need to embrace the change of, of this nature. It's a transformation. It's, it's a disruption uh, that is uh, uh, as for the benefits of, of the, uh, the, the economies of, of the region, for uh, empowering them to uh, also increase the level of integration between these economies. And it, that would have an effect. Uh, so the business model that uh, would benefit from further integration would see a lot of value. And the business model uh, that we're developing on the basis of the existing fragmentation, fortunately or unfortunately, they will have to adapt themselves to, to the new landscape. Uh, uh, beyond the region, uh, the, 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 the benefits are maybe even easier to uh, to demonstrate uh, because it's it's about uh, having a single and efficient access point uh, uh, for any partner uh, uh, of the region to have access 
uh, today to the region for payment, for investment, for co cooperation, for trading. Uh, uh, it requires a lot of effort uh, to connect to each and every country in a, a different fashion, in, in a separate way uh, uh, that uh, reduces the benefits and uh, uh, increases the, the cost, obviously. Uh, uh, offering uh, uh, a single access point to a, a broad region uh, through a market infrastructure like Buna with the efficiencies, with, 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 with uh, the speed and the low cost is a huge uh, uh, change for any uh, partner, uh, uh, trading partner for any uh, uh, other country located uh, uh, in, in a different region. Uh, it, it, it brings again this dimension of making uh, the cross-border payment and access to the region as simple as to the access to a single country. Okay. Um, and then how are you planning to grow and expand your network of participants, but also of currencies? Uh, what has been achieved so far? Uh, and then what is anticipated for Buna in 2021? Yeah, thank you for, for, for this question. So uh, uh, in terms of uh, currencies, we, we have achieved our objective for uh, 2020. Uh, we have now four currencies onboarding, uh, on the, onboarded on the platforms, uh, which are the uh, Emirati Dirham, uh, the Egyptian pound, the Saudi real, and uh, more recently, the US dollar. Uh, so uh, we have already four currencies, but also the mixture that we wanted from the beginning between Arab currencies and international currencies. So this is already part of the platform. Uh, what we have in the pipeline these days are uh, three more currencies. Uh, so the, uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, weeks, we aim at announcing the, uh, the fact that uh, Jordan Dinar is in full operation also in Buna, uh, and that should go uh, uh, together almost at the same time with, with the Euro announcement. Uh, and we hope also to have uh, uh, one Asian currency probably announced in, in the near future. Uh, more will come for sure. Uh, but uh, I, I can already uh, share with uh, with you the, the fact that we have three more currencies in the pipeline, uh, and the same growth uh, will happen uh, when it comes to the participant. Uh, so today we are in contact with uh, uh, more than 130 banks uh, at different stages of preparation. Uh, about 90 of them have started their onboarding to Buna. Uh, and some are already fully operational, uh, so that uh, will continue uh, over the over this year, uh, and we hope to have uh, uh, at least these 130. All of them are oper operational by the end of the year. Okay, how are you getting the word out? Really, like how are you engaging with banks um, in the region, but also externally? We use all what you can use to uh, do this type of engagement. Uh, again, it's not it's not an easy task. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's an important change. So we have to use different instruments to have that engagement. Uh, I refer to uh, uh, the uh, online workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, I should thank uh, very uh, very sincerely the, the effort that is being done by by the central banks. Uh, from the region in particular, but also outside of the region. So uh, the, the central banks like Buna, they are very supportive. Uh, and the central banks uh, from the region are sitting next to us, uh, speaking to their banking communities to incentivize them to, to join Buna. Uh, to explain to them the value and to 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 increase this the, the pace of of the onboarding for of their communities uh, so with all this type of uh, effort combined and again uh, we are in an industry network so the more we have banks the more we'll have uh, other banks joining uh, we we are confident that we'll achieve our objective for 2021 as well okay um so why and how is empowering the Arab economies really key to Buna's mission uh, and also your long-term strategy? Uh, the, the why is very easy because we have been created for that. Uh, mm. So uh, I refer to the uh, uh, central banks taking, having that vision and, and, uh, 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 and initiating the, the, the project, uh, that was the objective. We have to empower Arab economies. We have to, uh, uh, 
to uh, 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 increase the level of integration between them. Uh, uh, the how, uh, so this is what was powerful in their thinking, is to connect it directly to, to payment. Mm. To payment. So payment indeed is key. We cannot think about a well-functioning economy without uh, appropriate payment uh, solutions to support that. Uh, so the, 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 and the how is uh, with the, 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 the openness that I uh, explained earlier uh, on to, uh, to, to the uh, international but also uh, Arab currencies. So uh, some of the Arab currencies today are not very intensively use it for cross border payment, even between Arab currencies. That could change with Buna. That could change with Buna. And this is one tangible uh, element of, of uh, contributing to empowering Arab economies and facilitating further integration between them. Uh, uh, if I take it from a more business perspective uh, and considering just the business of Buna, uh, uh, here, obviously, also uh, for us, it's much better to have powerful economy than weak economy. So it's yes. it's a virtuous virtuous circle. Uh, uh, Buna is supporting uh, the, the economic growth of of the region, and the economic growth of the region is supporting Buna, and we hope to continue like that. Okay, great. Well, I have to say we're coming close to the end of time, but I sort of wanted to ask one of those bigger picture uh, questions which is around, you know, what do you think the future of cross-border payments will look like? Um, you know, do you think there's just going to be one system for the whole globe? Or do you think, again, it will be based more on regional systems that interconnect and, are, um, yeah, have that interoperability? No, I don't think that uh, the one single system for the whole group is something that is achievable. I'm, I don't even think that it's something that is desirable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I think that uh, uh, we'll see uh, more regional initiatives, uh, a solution like Buna developing in, in different regions. Uh, some national solution also uh, uh, will be uh, developed and uh, be more open to, to cross-border dimensions. Uh, and we'll certainly see more collaboration. Uh, so in, in different shapes, in different forms. So it could be uh, interconnectivity, it could be interoperation. So uh, the, the, I don't think that there will be one size fits all. Uh, 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 and we know that uh, there are certain corridors that deserves more efficient solution than others. Uh, so th there will be some diversity, but uh, for sure, and thanks to the uh, effort again that is being done at the G20 level, uh, further collaboration between different actors at regional and national level to, to have really this uh, cross-border and global dimension that is, that is a must. Okay. Um, I don't really want to take you too far down the cryptocurrency rabbit hole. Um, but what um, role do you think, let's say, central bank digital currencies will play in the future? Yes, so the, the, the digital currencies, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the emergence or the, the, the trendy part of it now is the result of a kind of reaction to, uh, to the emergence of crypto assets, which are uh, considered by the regulator less secure, less efficient, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, the, the more efficient cross-border payment uh, solutions are already an important response to that risk. Uh, uh, whether uh, uh, cryptocurrencies or uh, 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 central bank digital currency would be needed on the top of that, most likely, most likely. Uh, but in my view, I think the work that is being done now on making cross-border uh, payment much more efficient is key is key and it should be uh, uh, keeping us focusing on it for, for some time. Uh, uh, of course, with certain forward looking uh, and uh, view on, 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 uh, on uh, central bank digital currencies, which in my view will happen one day or another, but maybe not in the very, very near future. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Mehdi. I thought that was such an interesting discussion. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joy. It was a pleasure to be with you. Uh, and good luck in 2021 with Thank the you. Bruno rollout. Thank you very much.